So you're ready to move OBS between PCs, for example, if you set up a dual PC streaming setup or you're just upgrading PCs or you're reinstalling Windows and just need to shift everything over. How is the easiest way to do that? We're going to cover that in today's video. I'm Eples Vox, the stream professor, and in previous videos I've covered Exceldro's amazing scene collection manager plugin, which helps you keep regular backups of your scene collection in case anything goes wrong. I've also covered tips and tricks on how to organize your scenes and your sources to keep everything together. In this video, I'm covering how to move all of that stuff between computers. This is a follow-up to a Twitter thread I got tagged in. I'm super late replying to this just because I wanted to verify there was no easier solution before I got weird about it. Uh, but we're gonna jump in. First and foremost, before you reinstall Windows, move computers, do whatever you're doing, you need to back up what you have. So for your profile, which contains your resolution, your frame rate, your encode settings, your hotkeys, all of that stuff, you go up here to profile and you click export. And then you select a folder and it's going to automatically make a folder like it has here because I've already made this video because nothing has gone right this week and hit select folder and it will back it up. Same thing for scene collection. Go to scene collection, export and click save. And it's going to make two files. Now you'll want to move those files to an external hard drive, a flash drive, Dropbox, your network storage, whatever you're gonna use to move this either between computers or across your Windows or operating system installs because you'll wanna be able to you know, keep track of those. That's gonna contain all of your stuff pretty much except for the actual files and we'll talk about that in a moment. If you wanna do this manually for some reason, your profiles and scenes are stored in your user folder, app data, roaming, OBS studio and basic and then there's separate files for your scene collections and folders for your profiles so you can get those there now the next step is to figure out what files you need to back up specifically for media files we're talking about here but the, this also applies to image files to music files things like that so uh, media sources and vlc media sources will mostly show up as this play video icon here such as my beer back background signals here uh, unfortunately the athena scope file we're no longer using since rip to them sad face uh, but you also have images, which will show up as a little camera icon, files like that. Now, currently, unfortunately, OBS has no way to do this. I know Streamlabs at one point had a feature for this, but there is no tool like a video editor that's going to take your project and gather all the files together and ship them off. So if you don't have them stored in one place, you'll need to go scene by scene here and figure out where your sources are. But I do recommend when you're putting them in a new place for the new computer, lumping them all together because you know as things go as you're building up your scene collection over months or years you tend to you know export your graphics or download them in a bunch of different folders across your computer which is not organized or efficient or a means of keeping track of things but also when we import them if you put them all in one folder it'll make it a lot easier once we get later on in the video so you'll of course need to go through all of your different scenes and look for the different sources that you have in here so for example here's some warzone gameplay it's a vlc media source i can see that it's stored on a network storage here and i can go to that location and make sure it's either accessible once i reinstall or back it up with whatever tools necessary same thing for my br back screen here i can see my brb signals are a vlc media source file i can double click on it uh, media files are also going to have a browse menu here that will show a similar thing but you can see here they're stored in e stream graphics vintage test signals one and then the folders so then i can open up that file location e uh, stream graphics vintage test signals one and i can copy these out to a new drive network storage whatever to back them up and then we will put them together on the new computer you will need to do this for every single scene and source and double and triple check and make sure you have everything because you don't want to be lost without it However, if you are using a tool like, say, for example, Stream Elements, it, most of this layout is just browser sources. So these will import back with the, you know, with the scene collection once I import that later on. So that's going to be totally fine. And then your capture cards for your cameras, your webcams, whatever, uh, those should theoretically register as the same device across PCs but your mileage is gonna vary from there. But worst case scenario, if it doesn't activate like this does, then you just come down and choose it from the list and you know select it on your new computer and be good to go. So for example, I can come down here and choose my webcam, my overhead cam, click unmute, and theoretically it'll show up. I did just accidentally change the format, so we'll come back. I think this is hooked by another device, but you get the idea. Make sure you have all of your files backed up before you proceed. 
This video is sponsored by Riverside. Riverside.fm is a leading podcast and video recording platform that I actually just used to record my full interview with Mike Chi, which is already up on Nebula, talking about retro tink and retro hardware and things like that. And I use it for my Behind the Streams podcast. It's used by, you know, lots of people like Guy Raz, Hillary Clinton, Spotify, Disney, and more. It's super easy to join. You just give the guest a link. They join in without having to do anything complicated, and then it records audio and video locally on everyone's computers, and then uploads it automatically while the podcast or whatever show you're doing is happening, and the quality no longer depends on your internet connection. So you can get nice, crisp 4K video if you want, or 1080p, you get uncompressed 48 kilohertz wave files for your audio, you can get separate tracks, you can have it automatically generate graphics views for you if you want, or you can download the files and build your own, but it does have the magic editor, which can save you a ton of editing work with just a few clips. You can upload your logo, change the background, choose your layout and all that sort of stuff. And they even have a iOS app so that people can join on iOS with the first, you know, real high quality video podcasting option there as well. Riverside plans start at just $15 per month. It is super affordable to get started with very high quality captures and broadcasts to build your show. N no more screen capping video calling apps. All right. This is the way forward for high quality podcasts and interviews. I don't I don't want to see anyone using blurry screen cap footage in their interviews anymore. There is little excuse with Riverside being as accessible as it is. Head on over to riverside.fm slash eposvox and save $15 off a plan today with code eposvox at checkout. Next, you might think you're ready. Next, you got to check for plugins, filters, scripts, those kinds of things. Y you don't want to open your scene collection without those because it could break everything. So before you do anything else, it's time to poke around. Looking for plugins can be kind of annoying because there's no kind of, that I'm aware of, universal list of where they're at. But you can usually find some under tools. This is gonna, this doesn't have any. So if you see anything that's not in this list right now, it's probably a plugin. Use notepad, pen and paper, whatever you need to. Take note of these so you can install these later before we import our scene collection. You will also have filters. So for example, or sources. So if I go to plus sources, anything not in this list is probably a plugin. Same thing with filters. If we go to filter, well, that's not the right one. If we go to a source that's active and filter, you've got effect filters. So anything not in this list, probably a plugin and then audio video filters anything not in this list probably a plugin also keep in mind your VST plugins go to add one just to see what you have and if you've installed any they're gonna be in this list take note of these take a screenshot make sure you have these ready to go so you can install them on your new computer this is very important now as an example since this the demo OBS I'm using doesn't have any plugins installed this is my main OBS instance. So you can see here, I have stream effects already in the top bar. So I know that I need to reinstall that if I want to use it on my new PC. And then under tools, we have, for example, the teleport plugin I just showed off, the Elgato remote control plugin, Tuna. We have some plugins showing up here. If I go to add a source, we've got a couple different sources here that display for plugins. And same thing for filters. If I go to filter and add a new filter, uh, we've got teleport at least showing up. So you can see here, NDI, there's a couple filters that are plugins and same thing with filters here. Quite a few of these are added from different plugins that I have. So you'll need to take note of these and gather, you know, your installers when you reinstall or move computers to make sure you have all of these. Another handy thing you might want to check is go to tools and scripts. If you're using any scripts or your Python settings, you'll want to take note of those. That way you can import them later as well. All right, so, so far we've made direct backups of our profiles, our scene collections, and obviously do it for all the ones you want to preserve, not just the one. And then we've gathered our media files, We've written down a list and ideally gathered the installers for our plugins, our filters, our scripts, whatever additional modules that we've added to OBS Studio. Now we're ready for your reinstall to move PCs, whatever you're doing here. So to simulate this, I'm actually going to rename the folder. Well, first I'm going to switch to a blank scene so that we're not messing anything up while it's active. We're going to rename the folder that our media files are stored in. So for example, it's called Vintage Test Signals 1. We're going to delete that and just make it vintage test signals. Now we're going to pretend this is a blank canvas of OBS. Don't do anything yet. I'm playing a trick on you. Don't do it yet. Instead, close OBS once you've installed it, made sure that it works. Install your plugins, install your filters, all of those things, and copy over your media files. Make sure they're in one place. You can do subfolders and stuff if you want, but it's going to work a lot easier for re-importing. You just kind of dump them in one place. I hate to admit it. Do whatever you want, but just saying that it'll go a lot quicker if that's your priority if you put them in one place. 
But go ahead and install your plugins and stuff because if you import and open up your scene collection that has plugins involved and those plugins aren't there, it gets a little weird. Theoretically, if you close it immediately and then install the plugins and you reopen it, everything should stay in place, but I've had times where that doesn't happen. So it's easier if you just have all that going. If you have any scripts active, you will need to reactivate those manually. That shouldn't affect too much. So once you have installed all your plugins and everything, now you go to profile, you go to import, you choose the folder that you did your profile for and click import and same thing for scene collection. Go down here to import. We're going to find our Twitch 2 we just exported. Which is right here. JSON file and click import. And now under your scene collection, well under your profile menu, of course you have the profile. That one just imported fine. But under your scene collection menu, we now have Twitch 2 2. We're going to choose that one. Obviously yours is going to be named differently. And here's the kicker. A couple versions ago, they added this missing files dialog, which will allow you to automatically search for and map back out all of your missing media files. This is why I said it'd be easier if you dump them in one place, because we can just select the first one, go to search directory, and then find that folder we were just in. Obviously, you will have to have copied it over. Stream graphics, vintage test signals, select folder. It's going to automatically find all the missing files. This one is one that just doesn't exist anymore at all, so we're going to ignore it, but you know, do whatever here and click apply and bam, we're back. It was that easy. Obviously from here, of course, you want to go through, make sure all your scenes are working, make sure everything's loading. If you have specific capture devices, you'll want to make sure that they're mapped out to the correct devices in here. Make sure everything's reading appropriately. Uh, go to your settings, make sure your hotkeys are intact. Again, these will be tied to your profile, but give it a run through, make sure before you stream, of course, and then under tools and scripts, find or activate Python and install Python if you haven't already and find your scripts that you were using and reconnect those and get all of that set back up. And before you stream again, it would probably be a good idea to go ahead and prune your scene collection because if you're like me or any creator that builds up your scene collection over the course of months or years, you get a little bit of bloat in your scenes and your sources and it can actually impact performance and cause all sorts of issues. So reinstalling or moving PCs or whatever is a fantastic time to go ahead and clear out any bloat, any junk, any stuff you're not using, and any disconnected media sources you don't have anymore, and kind of slim them down so that you're ready to rock on a fresh system and getting a full advantage of whatever reinstall or move that you made. I hope this video was helpful for you. Unfo I, I, I hate making tutorials like this where there's no easier solution, but currently this is really the only way to go. Like I said, this was in response to a Twitter thread. Sorry it took me so long. I just really wanted to make sure but there wasn't a plugin I missed because I get comments all the time whenever I pose a solution I've been using for a long time and they're like, dude, a plugin released like six days ago. Why didn't you know? I don't get notifications for that stuff. So here you go. Here's my option for you. I do hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button if you did. And remember, be kind. Rewind. I'll have links to the tutorials for organizing your scenes and sources if you want to start fresh or clean up your scenes and sources, as well as the Scene Collection Manager plugin linked below.